What is up you guys, my name is Austin Marks, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist who is pursuing the physician assistant career path. On my channel I make videos talk about respiratory therapy as well as my journey becoming a PA. So if you want to see all that, make sure you like and subscribe. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about graduate level uh, PA programs. So there are some PA programs out there that you can enter right out of high school. Those are a whole different beast. Um, I'm not talking about them at all today, I'm talking about the graduate levels, the ones that where you need a bachelor's degree in order to apply. So you need your bachelor's degree in order to apply to these schools, and then you also need to take other classes. So for example, I have my bachelor's in respiratory therapy, however, for my bachelor's I didn't need to take organic chemistry. So I'm going to have to take organic chemistry in order to apply to a graduate level PA program. Now saying that, organic chemistry isn't required for every PA program out there. So I'm going to have to do my research on what classes are required for each individual program. So there's a book out there. It is called the Application Manual of Physician Assistant Programs. Um, each year they come out with this book. It has all the requirements for every program in the United States. So it'll talk about all the classes that are required, the GPAs that you need. It'll talk if you need any uh, tests that are required, such as the GRE, the MCAT, the PACAT. Um, maybe you need to take a Casper test. It just talks about all that good information, and if you're lucky, you can go ahead and see the stats of the previous class in that program. So you can see their GPA, maybe their GRE score. Uh, you can just basically see how you match up and if you're a good fit for that program. So as I said, uh, that book talks about all the different classes that are required for each individual PA school. So that's the tricky thing about PA school, is not every school requires the same classes. So one school may require organic chemistry and biochemistry, and the other may require physics. And then the next school may require both of those, and then the very next school may not require any of those. So it's an open field. Uh, you just basically got to know what you're getting into and which schools you're applying to so you can have all the classes prepared ahead of time before you uh, go ahead and apply. Because if you apply and you get into the school, and then you're about to start and they see your transcript that you did not complete that class, they'll just not even take you then. Uh, they'll deny you, sorry, uh, better luck next year. Stating that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the primary classes that are across the board accepted by uh, PA schools. So this would include biology, you generally need at least two semesters of that. A&P, or anatomy and physiology, you generally need two semesters of that. Uh, chemistry, most times it's also two semesters. Um, most times you also take an upper level math course, so this may include statistics or general algebra, or sorry, college algebra. Um, you don't need to go ahead and take calculus or anything. It's only required for a handful of schools. Same with physics. Physics is not required for every single school, so I know a lot of people struggle for physics. And physics is a big one for med school students because uh, physics is hard, I'm not going to lie. Organic chemistry is another one. So a lot of schools do require organic chemistry, however not every single school does require it. Uh, that goes the same with biochemistry. That's in the same boat as organic chemistry. Microbiology is another huge science that you need to go ahead and take when applying to PA school. So with all these science courses I mentioned, such as biology, chemistry, A&P, microbiology, you want to take a lab with those courses. So most times uh, they want you to take the lab in person. This is probably 90% of uh, PA schools. I know right now with COVID and everything, the majority of you may be taking uh, classes online. So you can't go ahead and do your lab in person. Uh, they're obviously going to make an exception for this. However, any other time you want to go ahead and take those labs uh, in class. I know some classes are like a blended 50-50. So I did this for microbiology. I took the lecture online and then I did my lab portion in the classroom. I did reach out to one school and they did say that that was acceptable. They would go ahead and take that. So not every class needs to be taken in person. So when talking about classes, you want to make sure that you do good in them. So most schools have a requirement of a 3.0 GPA. Some go as low as 2.5 and some go as high as 3.5. So you just want to make sure you have an A or a B. Um, if you're not the strongest in science, uh, you may want to go ahead and take some other classes to kind of boost that GPA. However, some schools also look at pre work as a GPA, as well as your science GPA. So between your overall GPA, your prerequisite, and your science GPA, they'll go ahead and see how good of a fit you are going to be for their PA program. If they see that you took all easy classes, um, just to boost your GPA for these science ones that you got all C's in, 
they're obviously going to see that something's up and that you may not do the best with them PA school because PA school is very science driven. <laughs> with these classes you're going to also want to take them within a certain amount of time. What I mean by that is that some of these classes need to be taken within five years of applying. So some older students who are applying, um, you want to make sure that you take your AMPs, um, maybe your biologies within that time frame. Each school is different. Some schools have a requirement of five years, some are three, and some go as long as ten. So once again, you want to look at the website for the school or you want to go ahead and get this book which will give you all that information. Another thing I wanted to talk about is that you can apply with actually not taking some of the classes that are required when applying. So what I mean by that is that I can apply to a school and say, hey, I don't have this class, I didn't take it yet, but I plan on taking it and I plan on doing well in it before I actually apply or I get accepted. So most schools have a requirement of two or three classes that you can have outstanding. So you need to take these classes um, after applying. Uh, if you get accepted, you need to complete them. So let's say you get accepted to a school where you have an outstanding class. You need to make sure you complete that class before you actually start the program, otherwise they're going to cut you. They're going to say, sorry, you didn't complete all the requirements. We're going to go ahead and take the next person in line. So you can apply with outstanding classes or classes still in progress, but you want to make sure that you actually take the classes. If you guys have any questions about taking classes uh, for PA school, PA school in general, or even respiratory therapy, leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.